In this video, I'm going to give you my top five tips for painting with contrast paints. If it's your first time on the channel, then please consider subscribing. So I found that uh, if you paint with a zenithal highlight, you can get some much better uh, effects with, with the contrast paints. So, for example, you can see on this model here, um, I've gone with Leviadon Blue, but actually it's a lot darker at the bottom. And then as you look at where the light is, you've got a much nicer natural highlight. So I've left the other guy ready to go. So I'll show you what this works. If you're not sure what a zenithal highlight is, all that is is I've used black, uh, so if we turn it round, you can see uh, underneath, you can see the black colour. Um, and then I've used white over the top. Um, so let's look at how that affects the model when we add the contrast paint to it. So we'll start with the legs here. So you can see as we add the contrast paint, it looks pretty good. It just gives it that extra layer of depth so it's just a real simple thing that you can do to just get a little bit more um, out of the contrast paints when you're using them straight out of the pot uh, and I think it actually it really does add to the model uh, you can do the same so I, I think it works best with dark colors with the light colors it's it's not so noticeable and actually might give you some harsh results but certainly with the dark colors it, it, it really does add something if you go for a zenithal uh, type highlight on there as well and here's the reason you go from light to dark where you've got the dark and you've kind of spilled over onto the light a bit. It's not so much an issue. So if I wanted to uh, just go in and, and touch up where I've overspilled, for example, I can do that really easily. You know, it might take me a, a coat or two to get that done. But actually, it's so much easier. If, if I'd done that the other way around, and if I'd um, painted all my light first, and then I went to put the dark on, it would have made it really difficult um to correct any mistakes i've made but doing it this way round means that it just all goes together that bit but that much better um so it's a lot easier to correct any mistakes you make if you go um from dark to light as opposed to light to dark uh, it just makes the whole process a little bit quicker and easier for you as a painter So the reason you want to use a paint agitator is to real mix these up. So this is uh, Militar and Green. You can see this white stuff at the bottom? That's all contrast medium. Um, so you can see it's starting to mix back in a little bit. Um, it's really difficult to get that in if you haven't got an agitator. You need to shave your, save your wrists. So if I do that, you can kind of hear the agitator in there. So that's just with some gentle shaking. So if I shake that up off camera really hard, you can still hear the agitator in there. And then when we come back in, you can see that almost all of that contrast medium is mixed in, apart from a little bit there. So it's just a really good way of saving your wrists and making sure that the contrast paints are mixed to the right consistency. Uh, now I'll put a link below to the ball bearings I use, and you make sure they're stainless steel, because they're not stainless steel, they will rust, and obviously that will ruin your paint. So check out the link below if you need to get your own ball bearings. So the next tip is to just keep the paint moving around the model. So if we take this pox walker and we've got some Nasdrag yellow there, and we're just going to move this, put it onto him. Now it's really easy. To just let the contrast paint do its work and hope that it turns out all right so it's not looking too bad and again this is just a test this isn't gonna 
win me any painting awards. What I'd say is really important is dry your brush off and take away some of that excess. Keep that paint moving around the miniature. Because if you keep the paint moving around the miniature, it's not going to dry. It's not going to pool, so it won't leave you any ugly spots. And it should hopefully uh, give you a nice even coat uh, to go to the next stage on whether that's to you know whether you want to highlight it or whether you want to just leave it as it is uh, it's really important to keep that paint moving around the model and the last tip really is have some patience um, wait for the contrast to dry before you move on to the next one because if you don't, it can get quite messy. So if we're putting some black Templar on here and we think, oh, do you know what? This is lovely, looking pretty good. It's not wrong, it is. It looks okay. It probably needs two coats to actually look um, like a good black color that we've got on this Pox Walker. But here's the thing. If we get a little bit impatient, Inside, oh, do you know what? I really want to finish it. I'm going to get some, get some gullum and flesh on there and work on the red, uh, on the flesh rather, not the red. I don't know what I'm talking about half the time. Um, and we might think, all right, well, I'm just going to get this in there. And think, I'll just be careful when I get to the black templar, and up oh, before you know it, that black templar is running up the leg and is totally mixed in with the gullum and flesh. Um, so it could create some cool effects and if you're looking for a, a blend on the model that could work But actually that's just drawn the black Templar right up into it. So that's probably not worked So that's the last tip be patient wait for the contrast paints to dry before you go in with the next layer Those are my top five tips for painting with contrast What are the best tips that you've heard or that you've used when using these new brand of paints? Let us know in the comments down below I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like, leave a comment, and also subscribe to the channel. If you'd like to support the channel, there are some links which I've talked about through the video. Now, those are affiliate links, and they do send a small percentage of the sale back to me. However, it doesn't cost you anything. Thanks again for watching.